Anne Phillips was abducted by four Somali pirates for ransom, and they were stuck in a lifeboat for over four days before they were eventually taken out by the Navy SEALs. But did you know the Somali leader in the hijacking was actually a teenager? The captain in the story, Abduwali Abdulkhadir Musa, was sentenced to 33 years and 9 months in prison. This was done even after his mother pled to the President of the United States at the time, Barack Obama, to pardon her son. <laughs> He was deemed to have been over the age of 18, an age fit to be tried as an adult, due to inconsistencies in his narrative where he claimed to be 16 years old. Although correlated by his mother, he was eventually caught admitting to lying and confessing that he was between the ages of 18 and 19. Fred Galloway, the man responsible for transporting Musso to America, was the main reason why the court decided that he was over the age of 18. Galloway testified in court that Musso confessed his real age to him, saying that Mr. Musso, after giving different ages, said he had been untruthful, apologized, and said he was between 18 and 19. He also said, I'm sorry for lying to you. When I pray again, I'll ask Allah to forgive me for lying to you, and I won't lie to you again. On top of this, Galloway also went to Galkayo, Somalia, where Musa grew up, and found testimony from a former classmate that he was of age and wanted to do piracy. This was done to avoid a defense in court that Musa was underage and was forced into doing piracy. Musa was indeed tried as an adult and was facing lifetime sentences from several charges including piracy, a crime that had never been tried in a US court in over 100 years. However, he was instead sentenced to 33 years and 9 months after pleading guilty to hijacking, kidnapping, and hostage-taking charges. This is Musa handcuffed while escorted by authorities out of a plane easily one of the worst situations you can be in life. And there he is smiling like a kid in a candy store. After hearing the events of the pirate attack broadcasted all over the US, people were furious to see him smile. However, Galloway, who was escorting Musa at the time, said it made perfect sense why he was smiling. Well, I was telling him on the plane ride over that he was going to be bigger than Elvis. He had no idea who Elvis was, so I showed him a picture. But when he stepped out of the trunk, he saw about 300 news media people waiting for him and lit up. Musa was an impoverished child, hailing from one of the poorest places on earth. So for him, five minutes of fame was an amazing experience, no matter the reason. To put this into perspective, the per capita yearly income of the average Somalian in 2009 was $250. That's it. And it's only grown to $320 today. This is nothing. Any developed country in the Western world makes easily over $30,000 a year. And even worse, the infant mortality rate in Somalia is currently the fourth highest in the world at 6.4%, only dropping below 10% in 2001. It's sad to say, but Musa's story is not unique. Coming out of the womb with a 10% chance of death, raised to impoverished parents and five other siblings just to live off what you can barely fish out of the sea, making in a year what an American teenager can in a week. This was and still is the life of many Somalians. The people are poor to the point that politicians complained about trialing pirates in their own countries because they don't want the criminals to just apply for citizenship after completing their jail time. There was going to be a, a problem uh, trying Somalis. Um, well, in what way? Um, in Europe in general, but especially in, in Germany, I think there's a, actually a, a law against shipping them back to Somalia because it's considered not a safe place. Um, for so, them? For them. The idea that committing piracy with the risk of getting caught and going to prison in a Western country is better than living a poor life in Africa just goes to show how damaged this continent still is. Some Somalians in this situation see piracy as an opportunity to both feed their families and punish the people who illegally fish out of their waters. I can understand why people would do it. This is their perception of foreign ships going into their waters. We used to work as fishermen until 1991. After the collapse of the central government, we had faced attacks by international fishing vessels that use illegal fishing nets. They dumped toxic waste and nuclear waste in our seas. 
Then they came back and they brought with them weapons and that frightened us. They continued fishing in our seas armed with their weapons. I was captured doing this work and it's not something that we have caused, but it is the Europeans and Americans who had caused it. It is true that many foreign fishing companies still return to Somali fishing waters to commit crimes of illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. The number of ships who do this have even increased since the decline of Somali piracy in 2012. However, the blame does not solely lie on the foreign ships. Because of lack of autonomy between Greater Somalia, Somaliland and Puntland, fishing licenses given by one authority are not accepted by others allowing bad actors to team up with corrupt officials to, for a fee, provide their own bogus fishing permits to foreign fishing companies. These companies obviously know these fishing permits are fake, but they still team up with the corrupt officials to forge documents and are even provided onboard security to defend them from the Somalians whose fish they are stealing from. This is still a massive issue for Somalia with no signs of improvement till this day. In fact, after 33 foreign countries established the Anti-Piracy Coalition back in 2012, which patrolled the seas off Somalia's coast and greatly reduced the threat of piracy attacks, the amount of illegal fishing shot up. These companies used bottom trawling and gill netting, two fishing methods that greatly destroyed the ecosystem and harmed protected species. Getting foreign patrol ships to shoot down pirates was not the solution to Somalia's problems and it didn't reduce the amount of crimes committed in Somalian waters. It just pushed the problem back to the people who were already suffering enough. Now they know the solution to this and we know it too. And all these navy ships coming to the Somalian seas are just doing the same thing again. Behind every navy ship that is supposedly guarding against the pirates, they're also bringing with them many foreign fishing vessels. We tell the international community that there is no solution in sending these Navy ships to Somalia because they are not doing anything to stop this illegal fishing. Piracy is just a symptom of the abuse the country has been through, both from political corruption and foreign countries who do whatever they want to maximize profits at the expense of the people who live there. We are seeing this currently with the people in southern Nigeria in the Niger Delta who have started taking up piracy in rebellion to BP and foreign fishing vessels for illegally dumping oil into their waters and illegally stealing their fish. Pirates who plunder ships and threaten people's lives for money are scum, but the companies and corrupt officials that steal from people and pollute their waters for their own profits are worse than scum. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good